Looking for the best decks in MTG Timeless Best of One to rank up the Mythic with? Well, we're going to got you covered with this video looking at the metagame distribution, the best decks, the highest win rate decks, kind of a share in terms of the tier list of what is the most popular played deck. We got that all covered for you today in this metagame breakdown. As always, we're getting the data from Untapped GG, what you see on the screen, companion tool that runs alongside Arena's client, aggregates users' win rates, uh, and then gives us a whole bunch of cool stats. So we will take a look and deep dive. We're going to look at Platinum to Mythic and Diamond to Mythic, kind of two sample sizes today for both distribution and some of the win rate decks. It's still early in the season, so we're getting a little bit of a mix. For those folks wondering, you know, what Bloomboro cards are taking the meta by storm? Not much, to be honest. You went from Modern Horizons 3, which was like one of the most push sets ever, to Bloomboro, which is like standard, kind of more creature focus synergy decks that won't have a huge impact but we've seen some shakeups a couple new archetypes and we're probably going to get an influx of boros energy players from historic into timeless given some of the nerfs that impacted that format there so let's start off we'll look at the popularity of the day all the deck lists are they're time stamped and included deck lists so you can import them to your heart's content so we have in the Platinum to Mythic rank, Show and Tell is the most played deck uh, at about 17%. Boros Energy 14, Mardu Energy 11. Then we have like the Vampire Combo, Demir Tempo, the Reanimator decks kind of mixed into there. If we actually flip it to Diamond to Mythic, we actually have the Vampire Combo uh, a little bit higher at 22%, Show and Tell at 14, Reanimator at 10, and then the Energy decks. Uh, at eight so we see just kind of the little switch there show and tell drops a little and we get a lot more vampire more combo is being played it seems as we go a little bit higher so things to consider as you're kind of approaching the meta at different ranks a deck might be working for platinum you might need to switch it up at times or reconfigure once you're at diamond just based on the type of opponents you're playing you don't have the luxury of a sideboard in best of one so you have to kind of consider how you're attacking the meta at each rank so sorry about that so we're going to look Diamond and Mythic rank first. We got 3,800 games. And then if we look to Platinum rank, we have 18,000. So it's a lot larger sample population when we jump in uh, over the week in terms of the ranks themselves. So at Diamond rank, starting off, the highest win rate deck is Mardu Energy. So this is at 86%. Smaller sample size, 22 games. But this deck here, Luris Companion and... It is leveraging the black for Orcish Bowmasters, Juggernaut Peddler, and then Chthonian Nightmare. So lower to the ground, you're playing the Bombardment game plan. So you're looking to make a lot of tokens with Ocelot's Pride, Guide of Souls, a Johnny engine. You know, play a Johnny, shoot, sacrifice the cat token it makes, flip a Johnny, ping. It's just a whole engine on its own. Unstable Obelisk in here. So the main thing with the Mardu Energy deck, especially in best of one, you're very weak, the Boros version to show and tell in like some of the turn two, three, four combo decks. This provides a little bit more utility and reach with the Bowmasters. The Juggernaut Peddlers can act as hand hate. Honestly, even in best of one, just cutting the Nightmare and playing another Peddler could be reasonable because you are going to be running into more uh, combo than you would necessarily in best of three formats. Um, so you have that version of the deck. We do see Boros Energy also show up at 78%. A lot of similarities here. Um, you have a lightning bolt in the main, basically no bowmasters in place. You're playing things like Thraben's Charm. Uh, this can blow, destroy an enchantment, notably show and tell. It can exile graveyards. Hey, look, there's a bunch of graveyard focus combo decks and it's removal on its own. This version is also playing in license hearse in the main. We see a lot of kind of holdovers from the historic deck. So this one looks largely like they brought over their historic deck and they're winning here. So Prismatic Vista over any of the fetches. This mana base could definitely be improved with fetches getting rid of some of like the pathways and stuff like that uh tai joaquin it's good in the creature mirrors with bombardment because you can ping off the little things probably not as relevant in this format impetuous loot monger was another way to break the mirrors um, but this is pretty much straight like i took the historic version added ragavans and a lightning bolt and called it a day um, but showing like if you are kind of coming over from historic, you can still play pretty much your deck in this format here. We then go to five color reanimator. Uh, so this is the non-vampire version, 75%. So it's got the grief, 
package with reanimate, no scam elements, just reanimate kind of mixed into there. Collective Brutality can help you bin cards. You have looting in here. Tiny Bones joins up is an interesting one. Uh, any number of target players each discard a card so you can target yourself. Uh, they mill and lose a life. This one's an interesting one to include in here. I think there's better kind of self-discard outlets, um, but nonetheless, you're playing it in the deck. Uh, so this is kind of reanimating. You have the Soren line that can bring back, notably, no Vayne Ripper, just Saint Alenda and Olivia, which can also reanimate. And then we have another vampire, Vona de Leto, the Antifex. Alchemy card, 5 mana, 4, 2, Menace. When it enters the battlefield, destroy target, non-land, non-token permanent an opponent controls, then you may discard a card. If you do, conjure a duplicate of that permanent into your hand, and then the duplicate gains... Uh, man of any card. So it's another discard outlet, and then you kind of get that card in hand. So it's a way to kind of self enable. It's some removal. It's a vampire as well. So kind of an interesting card here. Uh, Grizzle Brand, which is card not great in the format, I don't think, just because Bowmaster might exist. It's also like not fast enough, I think, on its own, but another interesting card nonetheless. Probably just play more Atraxis, to be honest. Uh, so show and tell. There's kind of two versions of show and tell. There's the Saltai kind of traditional, and then there's the Simic Eldrazi show and tell. This link, for whatever reason, just this one deck list link with this the highest rate, keeps giving me an error when I open. So unfortunately, I do have to show it this way here. Um, but the core of this version here, it's like the Fey Atraxa version. It's kind of focused solely on the combo and keeping it going. Uh, three brainstorms could probably be four, some spell pierce. Uh, things like Impulse, just play the fourth Brainstorm. It's playing Tainted Indulgence in here. Again, just play the Brainstorm. Uh, interesting card that it's playing in the main. You have Waterlogged Teachings. It's a land, but it can also be a tutor for some utility. Main board Cross and Grip is kind of interesting, kind of tech. If you're anticipating a lot of show and tell just to kind of break the mirrors. Full uh, Leyline Main to protect your combo. And then this also has a wooded foot, uh, shifting woodlands. So even if you discard your omniscience, you can have the woodlands copy the omniscience and win that way there. The combo for those unfamiliar, you can either fave wishes or masterminds acquisition. Uh, so you fay the masterminds acquisition, and then you get the bonds of insight. The bonds of insight. If you do do the masterminds approach, you get both of the masterminds back. Then you get the approach to second sun, and then basically masterminds for the other approach. If you only have the one masterminds with bonds of insight, you would just get another one of your card draw engines, something that helps you dig towards the approach, ideally if you have the omniscience out. So interesting kind of updated take on the deck here. You most likely won't be using any of these other cards in the matchup. You're usually using just these. So in all honesty, I would just play another masterminds in the side. Get rid of like you don't need this Platinum Angel in best of one. Just play a second Mastermind, so that way you have deterministic combo. Because you Masterminds for the Masterminds, and then you Bonds have the two Masterminds, and then you just deterministically win. We then go to a new deck, Orzhov Life Gain Scam. Yes, we scam, scam together all the Modern Horizon 2 and Modern Horizon 3 cards together and made a deck. Who would have thought? So what do we have? We have some of the Energy cards, Guide of Souls, Ocelot's Pride in here, Soren House Markov, then we have the Scam Package Grief Solitude with Ephemerate to blink, Not Dead After All, Malakir's Rebirth to get him bent to play, as well as Reanimate. Troll can also be reanimated. Witch Enchanter as a land and a way to blow up artifacts and enchantments. Good and best of one because it can blow up Show and Tell in the combo mirror. Belia can kind of buy your stuff, so you're just gaining some life, flipping Soren, scamming opponents packing their hands in different ways as well, which is an interesting kind of build of the deck. No companion with this one here. We then go to the vampire combo. So this one's 64%. So still reanimation elements, but it's got like the Phoenix kind of backup package. So there's a couple of ways you can Phoenix on turn one. Uh, you can go strike it rich, dark ritual, buried alive, put three Phoenix in your bin, animate. You can go Dark Ritual, Buried Alive, Surgical Extraction, one of your cards in your graveyard, uh, get three Phoenixes out. You can Dark Ritual, Soren into like one of your big vampires, Vein Ripper, St. Alenda, or Galta as well. So the rest of the deck's just kind of setting you up for the combo, but that's kind of the line that you're looking at with this deck here. 
then go to Demir Tempo. So Froggy Frog, no Frog, actually. Baleful Strix over the Frog. I still think this is wrong. I still think Baleful, Baleful Strix is a much better card. Or not Baleful, uh, Psychic Frog. Cards like being talked about being banned in Legacy, and you're just still playing Baleful Strix, which is kind of phased out. Um, but this is kind of a tempo element deck. We've seen the control versions of the deck be around with just Bowmasters, the win condition. This one's a little bit more proactive. The Tamiyo is very strong against the Boros energy decks, just kind of stopping a lot of their attackers once it flips. Very easy to flip with Brainstorm. Mockingbird can copy like the Baleful Strix Bowmasters or Nethergoifs. Uh, someone made a comment like Strix is better for Nethergoif because it's another type. But I still just think Psychic Frog enabling the discard, the draw, stuff like that is a lot better. Thoughts use for Hand Hate, Inquisition, just a bunch of removal kind of effects. Flare of Denial you can use to sacrifice your blue creatures to get some value in there too. Treasure Cruise for card advantage mixed in. Uh, then we go to Belcher combo. So another deck that's looking to just disregard what the opponent's doing in combo win. All the lands in this deck are module D DFCs. So once you activate Belcher, you deal damage to your opponent equal to the number of cards in your library. Uh, you have Leyline for protection, but also as an enabler. Kind of core of the deck will mostly be Beseech the Mirror for Iron Craig feet. Then if you have Belcher in hand, you can cast and activate at the same turn. Channel gives you the requisite mana to activate at the same turn as well. Uh, there's combinations of like potentially on turn one with Dark Rituals and just Magical Christmas line. You kind of pull through all that. Against the very aggressive decks, Calling Ritual can provide you enough mana to just cast and activate Belcher that same turn, which is kind of cool. Um, so you have that. Um, from there, we go to Boros Gengantha Energy. This is a platinum list. Um, so we have this here, 77%. So this is another deck that... They have the Marsh Fly, so they've updated it a bit. I don't love four Aether Hubs. I was playing two in the Mardu version. I, I still think just you're spending too much energy on stuff that's not really needed. Uh, this one's kind of teching a little bit more mainboard for Energy Mirrors with the Sun Cleanser. Big draw of this, you get Flage and Fable. Um, in best of three, last week we saw a lot of Mardu energy picking up in popularity, playing Omnixless as well as the Bowmasters. Um, but a lot of the similar items in here that we've seen in the other lists um fewer goblin bombardment but flage is kind of against the heavy removal interaction decks a little bit stronger in terms of that you might be better and best of one just going super linear in terms of like the luris versions just given that the format is a little bit more degenerate with like turn one two three combos where flage is more of that kind of mid-range grind card that has a lot more utility in best of three when the games tend to go a little bit longer and then lastly, we have Rakdos Scam, 65%. So this deck here, playing more your traditional scam that we saw like in Modern at the time. You have One Ring, you have your Evoke Elementals, Grief Fury, Shieldred One Ring kind of combo, draws you a bunch of cards. Three Crocs is interesting. Uh, just a lot of kind of discard hate. Uh, not that after all, Reanimate, Surgicals in here, Bowmasters. Just a very disruptive deck that's... Also leveraging the one ring shielded package to draw a bunch of cards, outgrind your opponent, gain a lot of life, and then just disrupt your opponent multiple different ways. So that is it for the week. Let me know what you've been playing, what you've been liking, and we'll be back later in the week for best of three for Timeless. We're going to be hopefully catching up as well on the historic format, see what that looks like post nerfs, see how much that differentiates uh, the energy decks from what we're seeing in Timeless. Thanks for watching, everyone. Stay safe.